All righty, it's Monday night. Voiceover Body Shop's coming up. We have a great guest. I mean, we always have great guests. Lovely lady, fabulous voice. Sylvia Vilgron's going to be with us. Yay! And so glad. Yes, and you've got some new piece of apparatus you're going to be bringing Well, there's up. something that was shot over my bow that got me kind of excited. <laughs> I don't have it yet. It's still vaporware, but I'll be talking about a new piece of gear coming out of NAB that we're going to go check out tomorrow. Cool. Yeah. All that coming up on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers. With a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars. A Virginia tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. A voiceover actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording. And a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, finally, to bring you all the latest technology. The superstars of voiceover today and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Antland Productions, where you can get a killer demo. Source Elements, makers of Source Connect, Source Connect Pro, and Source Connect Now. VO2Gogo.com and Rehearsal App. By VoiceOver Extra, your one stop for voiceover success. Edge Studio, find your voice. And Vizzy Demos. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Good. Everybody on cue. You got to like that. <laughs> Remember, if you're in here, you gotta you gotta say that. Be excited. That's right. You know, but we have a live audience tonight. They can actually applaud and stuff. Yay! Yay! Live audience, live audience. Okay, audience. thank you very much. Yeah, you, know, you can be here in the audience if you want to. If you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area on a Monday night, and uh, we're actually doing a show, which is almost every Monday night. That's right. Uh, just write to us at the guys at vobs.tv and let us know you're coming. And we'll lock the gate and make sure that nobody can get in here. Release the house. Oh, yes. <laughs> Set the alarms. Uh, anyway, uh, Sylvia Vilgras is with us tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a cancel on us a few months ago, but she has been gracious enough to come join us tonight. This is what's tough about being a working voice actor in L.A. where you're constantly on call. Your best intentions sometimes just do not come through when you've got a schedule of a life, a life schedule that way. Right. So. Like kids and stuff like We're that. We're so grateful that she's going to be able to make it tonight. Yeah. And we'll talk about her career. She's, she's a bilingual voice actress. She speaks Spanish and English, mm -hmm. but you'd never be able to tell. We're going to find out how she switches up so quickly, probably yep. within an actual session. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. Uh, plus, we had an interesting question from Jack DeGolia about normalization, which we'll talk about in a little, a little while. I love talking about normalization. Yeah, it's not normal. Uh, no, and, it's not. And, uh, and if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room. I know Jack Daniel is in there tonight, and he is making sure that it is uh, going to come our way. So we Thanks, Jack. We appreciate it. Jack's actually here in the studio with us tonight, and glad he's feeling better after... Going through the flu last week. Anyway, it's now time for... And now, the voiceover extra, VOBS News. The latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news. Brought to you live. All righty. Yes, it is April 24th, and it is time for the voiceover extra news. Advice for producers. Okay, how dangerous, is it, it, how dangerous is it for you to offer advice to your voiceover directors and producers? Hmm, think about it. If you're close and work together often, you might feel a certain comfort level in giving suggestions. But otherwise, who wants to jeopardize future gigs? 
Well, a group of industry pros, including two producers, got together recently for a virtual chat. And the topic was what producers and directors do to make great recording sessions even better. Note that there's a positive spin on this. We're aiming to make things better for everyone. Now, this virtual chat was organized and recorded by VO Pro J. Christopher Dunn. And a new article now on VoiceOver Extra highlights some of the pointers you might wish you could give to your producers and directors. And P.S., you might even learn something yourself from listening to some of these. Here's suggestion number one. Keep the sessions light, relaxed, and fun. Nobody's life is on the line, unless it's your money as the producer. Two, always compliment the voice talent first. Three, maintain clear and friendly communication. Four, keep the talent's confidence high. That takes sucked! Five, just one safety is appropriate. When a producer asks for several safeties, it probably means the talent has not hit the magic spot. The magic spot, yes. And the session might well be saved by numerous safeties. Six, if possible, have the check cut so you can pay the talent when they leave. I like that. Seven, trust the talent to tell the story. Don't micro-direct. Eight, know what you're looking for before you hear it. All right, number nine, don't settle. If you haven't gotten exactly what you want, explain it differently to the talent and keep going. Number 10, remember why you hired this particular talent in the first place. They're trying to interpret what's in your head and give you their own spin on it. Makes complete sense. And there's more, including this from our good friend Jay Christopher Dunn. Make sure the script is final and has been approved by the client. You'll find this helpful article and hundreds more in VoiceOver Extra, your daily stop for voiceover success. Nicely done, sir. Why, thank you. Thank you very yes. much. Interesting that, you know, that producers are going to say these sorts of things. Having been in many, many sessions where there are producers that know what they're doing, they're sharp, they have it all together, and then you're working with some guy who's like, you know, was the secretary the day before, and they've thrown them into creative yeah. director status. And it's a step right in, yeah. And it's like, okay, your job is to act more professional than them, but never suggest. It's like, hey, you're in charge. Tell me what to do. It's a delicate balance. It is. You know? Yeah. It's part of... I mean, if you've been working with somebody for a while. I mean, mm -hmm. I have clients that I've been working with for, you know, you know, eight, nine years, and if we're doing a directed session or something, I'll say, hey, you can do it this way. He goes, oh, I trust you. Go ahead. Try it. You know, that sort of thing. But in a studio, when you're somebody else's studio, when you're, there's a producer or director there, if they tell you to put your wear your underwear in the outside, you wear your underwear in the outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's another way of saying if they say jump, you say how high. I liked mine better. But <laughs> anyway, so what's up with tech this week? Well, you know, every week I'm trying to find something tech that's interesting to me. And I, I think the problem is I've become a bit jaded. I've seen too much technology and a lot of it I just feel is just not suited for what we do. It's much too complicated, maybe much too cheesy somewhere. You know, finding something that's a sweet spot can be tough, but my my boss Graham Spicer he's he loves tech and he he subscribes to a million newsletters and somehow he manages to read them and he caught wind of a new product coming out from sound devices called the Mix Pre Three and um, this device is interesting again I'm going to preface this by saying this is probably more than many of you need okay I will preface it preface okay. by saying that because it's got three mic preamps first of all so many of you don't need three pre's. But what's interesting about it is it is an audio interface that's disguised. Well, actually, it's a mixer that's disguised as an audio interface. Um, it has the flexibility to do what a more complicated mixer can do, but it has the simplicity of an interface that you can operate with just a single knob. Turn your mic up, turn your mic down. And I love that about this unit. It's also extremely flexible in terms of its portability and its powering methodologies. You can power it off a of double A's, you can power it off a rechargeable battery, or you can plug it into to wall power. So it's definitely made for the Road Warrior. How about a solar panel? Probably. I mean, Man. if you have a solar panel, it has an USB input for power and data. 
and it has a USB-C jack, which is pretty new. Not too That's many cool. stuff has that yet. Um, so it'll plug into any USB-C product with a USB-C cable. One thing that makes it kind of unique, though, is not only is it a mixer, not only is it an interface, but it's also got another trick up its sleeve. It's a recorder. So it, it it's a built has a built-in recording like function. those old Roland uh, c- c- uh, recorders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. lots of these portable recorders. We've talked about them from time to time. But it's got an SD slot, and you can start that critical session that maybe that phone patch session where you just don't want an issue to to make you have to recall the client. I had some glitches, uh, I <laughs> or I forgot to hit record. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> um, with this thing, just make it part of your routine. Hit the record button and let it roll. You can let it roll all morning. Just have it rolling a backup throughout your whole session. And it's just it's just recording. You don't have to use that recording. If you don't want, you can still be recording into your DAW, Twisted Wave, whatever it is, simultaneously. There's not too many products that can do that. Right. Believe it or not, the the, the ability to record internally and record to a USB into a computer simultaneously is rather rare. Um, there's a lot of gadgets that have both and can do both, just not at the same time. Right. So that's a pretty cool thing. Right. It's not out yet. Ah. It's kind of vaporware, but not the kind of vaporware that is the central <coughs> mixer face um, <laughs> unit that we, some of you have paid money to get and haven't received How many yet. years has and it been since they started that campaign? Gosh, Three, man. four years? At least two years. Yeah, at least maybe. two years. This thing is not vaporware. It has a release date. It's coming out, I believe, May 3rd. You can check me on that. But we're driving to Vegas tomorrow. Yeah. Just George to look and Dan at this. are hitting the road. I said, Dan, I want to go try this out. We're driving to Vegas. No, do not that's not the reason. No. I mean, we're going for a lot of reasons, but we're very I'm really excited to see Sound Devices booth and try this thing out firsthand. And it's not crazy expensive. It's priced in line with a lot of the other pro audio interfaces. Of its ilk, it's around six ninety nine, six forty nine, something like yeah, that. And there it is. So it's yes, it's a lot more expensive than a Scarlett two i two. This would maybe be the next thing you might graduate to, right. or if you want a device that you can take on the road and never worry about it falling apart on you, this could be something to try out. But got, we'll find out more. Got like a rubber coating on it or something? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's made for travel use. It's made to be in a bag, like right. hanging in front of you. Oh, right? so like, it has nothing on the back. All gotcha. of the cables and connections are all on, on the, the sides okay, cool. so that you can have it in a bag. But, you know, so everything is where you can get to it. Okay, so, cool. We'll see. I'm, I'm excited about it, as all you right. can tell. And we'll, we'll get one to demo, I'm sure, from uh, B&H or something like that. All right. Well, we got more to talk about. We're going to talk about normalization in just a minute. Oh, and boy. I got another piece of technology I want to show off, too. So, anyway, coming up, Sylvie Villagrong will be with us in just a little bit. But stay tuned here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We'll be right back. You're competing for work with other voice talents, and every one of them has a powerful, unique, engaging voice demo. Your voice demo needs to stand out from the crowd in an unforgettable way. Now it can. Busy visual voice demos take your awesome voice demo and add a visual element, reinforcing your brand. Your demo will leave a lasting impression because it stimulates two senses instead of just one. Your voice is your livelihood. You need an effective demo to open doors of opportunity. Blow those doors down with a Vizzy visual voice demo. Visit VizzyDemos.com for more information. Your audio demo never looked so good. Take your voice demos to the next level, a visual level, with Vizzy visual voice demos. Vizzy Demos introductory pricing extended through the end of April. Hey, everybody. Shall I look at this camera over here? All right, cool. I like this camera. You know, some variety. Sorry. Sorry, Source Elements. I'm supposed to be talking about you guys right now. Source Elements, one of our lovely sponsors of our show, the creators of Source Connect, and one of the vendors we're going to actually get to see at NAB in person, which I'm excited about because they've got new products coming out that they can't tell us about unless you're at NAB. So that's another reason. I forgot that. It's on my list. Another reason we're going to NAB, talk to Source Elements because they've got new stuff coming out. It's going to be launching at the show up there in Vegas, and we'll be able to talk more about it. But what can you get right now? What can you get today that is working really well for voice actors? That's Source Connect version 3.9, the standard Source Connect. 
which you can download and start using today. You don't have to have an iLock USB key. If you have an iLock account and you have a USB key, fine, you can use it or not works without it. You can also get it as a subscription, so you don't have to buy it outright anymore. So the barrier to entry has been lowered tremendously to start using Source Connect. It's a great tool for connecting between you and other studios, sending streaming audio in very, very high quality, reliably back and forth. And you have control over the latency of that audio. So if you want a more reliable connection, you can adjust it that way. And if you want it to be uh, as low a latency as possible, you can adjust it that way. So it's very, very versatile stuff. You can give it a try at source-elements.com, 15-day free trial. And if you happen to talk to them, please tell them that we sent you. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks, Source Elements. And we'll be right back with more fun at VOBS. Minus four, are we at minus 4 dB? We're at minus 4 dB on VOBS. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. A good old-fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. You've got to learn the newsman camera switch. Mm. So Teach I me, Obi-Wan. Okay, well, you have to look into this camera over here. Okay. And now, and in other news, you turn your head, and that's how you do that. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> that wasn't hard. Which episode is this? 74? 74, All yes. Right. Coming along. Coming man, along. Man, I, re I learned that in college, and that was a long, long <laughs> time ago. Yes, it was. Anyway, I got my own little piece of tech to demonstrate tonight. You, you like Harbor Freight? <laughs> I love Harbor Freight. Harbor, there's, there's, Harbor Freight is great. There isn't one in Topanga, though. There, well, no, there's <laughs> no room for one there to be on the side of a hill. But no, uh, one of the they, they have great stuff. Yeah, they say it's, it's a lot of it's Chinese made stuff, but mm -hmm. the quality has gone up significantly. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and this week I had to get a bunch of things. You know, there's things that just have to get done around the house. I'm like, oh, I'm, well, I need a drill press. I mean, you know, 159 <laughs> bucks, get a drill press. But there's something that they are making a freaking fortune on. At Harbor Freight, something you wouldn't think about. It's the electric fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> I've used one of these before. This thing looks industrial, freaking it strength. It is, man. and it is powerful. Holy crap! And it has warnings on it. Do not touch the grid on here and hold the button Jeez. at the same. You could cause serious injury. How much voltage comes out of that thing? Uh, it? it doesn't say. Okay. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's proprietary yeah, information. But boy, I'll tell you, it makes bugs glow when they hit it. <laughs> and it, it, it it's very satisfying. On a really good forehand, and you hear the stud, it's like, whoa! Oh, he's stuck to it. You know, out of there. <laughs> my dad just got a, my dad just turned 71, by the way, on, oh, uh, on Sunday. Time. Happy birthday, Dad. And he got a Harbor Freight toolbox, and he loves it. Yeah. No. So. Yeah, get one of these. <laughs> I think it's cool. That, that is definitely a killer apparatus. Uh, so what does that have to do with normalizing? Uh, well, this isn't anything but normal. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, what, uh, we, we got a question from our good friend sitting out in there in the, in the desert, writing everything we down, everything we say down, yeah. Jack DeGolia said that, okay, there's an engineer we all know in, in Las Vegas who says you never normalize. Mm -hmm. And apparently some of the guys, at the Vegas voicers are all like, well, when do we do it? When do you normalize? What is the purpose of normalization? And you know, it, it you had something to say about it. I had say it's like it's like from Fiddler on the Roof. Someone says we have to go get these people, and the other one says no, no, we can't. And Tevye says you're right, and the other one says that you know you're right, and somebody yeah. says how can they both be right? Well, yeah. you're right too. Yeah. There's no right answer to this. It's dependent on a number of things. But yeah. you explain what normalization is from a technical point of view without making everybody's eyes roll back okay. to the back of their head. Well, normal normalization is basically volume control, but I call it a smart volume control. A normal volume or gain setting is relative. So if you're at whatever it is, the level's at minus 12, and you turn it up by 3, you add 3 dB. So it goes from minus 12 to minus 9. If you do normalize, it's more of a, what they call an absolute volume control. So it's always based on 0. 0 okay. is the loudest you can go. So if I set it to minus 3, 
it brings the volume as high as it can go and then backs it down by three. That's what normalizing does. There's other fancier ones than that. This is peak normalization I'm talking right. about, not RMS, not gonna go there today. But that's that's what normalizing does. It's just a digital volume control, really nothing else. Yeah. Can we go to the DAW view there, Andrew? DAW view 2017. Okay, let's demonstrate. <laughs> here we have your normal type of waveform here. And boy, people are calling left and right here. It's like, you can't call during the show. Believe it or not, Joe Davis tried to call during the show again. But anyway, uh, normalization, as George was describing there, if you record it properly the first time, like we did in rehearsal, then uh, you can, if you record it properly, nothing's going to happen when I normalize this. So if, right. I go, if I go to favorites and normalize to minus three, nothing happens because it was recorded right. To right. start with. Yeah, I mean, if the level's already peaked at minus three, normalizing to minus three will make zero change to the audio. Absolutely. And you can do it over and, and over, over and, and over, over and over. And not going to do anything. And it's a, nothing will happen. It will not hurt the audio in any way. That's right. Yeah. Now, now I could make this louder. Say I recorded this too loud. Mm -hmm. and you know, But the transients don't really overmodulate that much. And you want to make sure that you've, you've got the levels right when you send it off to you know whoever it is you're sending the file off to. Again, if you normalize, if it's too loud, people forget about this one. It will take it back down to a normal level again. Yeah, the level can go up or down because normalizing is an absolute setting. That's if right. If you set it to minus three, it's going to go to minus three. Right. The problem is, the problem is, if it's the starting levels are at minus 20. Or something really low. For example, we'll, we'll, and, we'll and we'll demonstrate this here yeah. with the the volume control here. Okay, if that's what your level. Now people like. send us stuff like this all the time. Yeah, where where the level is like down here. If mm -hmm. you're recording, they say, "Well, I can record it really low to avoid the background noise, <laughs> and then I can just I can just normalize yeah, it." That is definitely you know? a misnomer. And 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 there's a problem with that. Yeah, I mean, aside from it just not being proper technique. Right. What it does is you've got your signal, which is your voice, which is your sound of your voice going into a microphone and creating the sound of your voice on a hard drive somewhere. Right. And then you've got noise, which is everything that is not your voice. And when you normalize something, it doesn't just make your voice louder. It makes the noise louder. Everything gets louder. Everything gets louder. Everything. So if you've got a background noise issue... Normalization is not what you want to do. You want to be able to get rid of the physical noise in the background or have a quieter microphone because, mm -hmm. we, as we discussed, there are microphones that just have a lot of self-noise. Right. Normalizing is not a good thing to do. You use normalizing, from what I see, after you've done all the compression and all the things or somebody's run one of your stacks or something along mm -hmm. those lines. It's the last thing you do before you send it to an engineer. So it is at the right modulation and they've got the headroom to play with it and do with it what they want. Okay. My opinion. Okay. Uh-oh. Now we're in big Normalizing trouble. is part of a workflow. And if you, if normalizing is a tool you use as part of processing, then it should be used as part of your processing. What do I mean by that? The problem with the Twisted Wave stacks, the Adobe Audition stacks, pretty much all of these tools, except for one noted exception, is Audacity. And Audacity, you can make a chain and in the chain have normalize as part of the processing. Can't do that with the others. If it's part of your processing as a level adjustment to tweak the level so that the compressors work correctly, basically allows you to sort of automate your threshold setting of your compressors, what it's doing. I mean, this is kind of what the nuts and bolts of it is. This is why when I set up and set up processing for somebody with a stack or a rack or whatever, the stat, the normalizing is a part of that process because I can't guarantee that you, the voice actor, are going to record with perfect levels. We'd love you to. We'd love you to know how to set your levels. We'd love you to do it the right way every time. We just know that you're not going to because your actors, sometimes, some days you're going to be Recording, I know some of you, uh, you've, uh, you've probably hear me, heard, heard me tell some of you, you probably have a little Sharpie mark on your preamp. I have several. That says, this is where I put it. Right. And it's, on this particular project. And you want it to be set it and forget <laughs> right. it. And we try to have as much as we can be set it and forget it. It's just impossible to do that. Just, you, you can have, well, I'll usually have one that's maybe conversational. 
one that's dark trauma, drama, trauma, drama read, <laughs> or drama. and then maybe one that's video game animation. Right. You know, if you could have maybe three settings and that'll get you in the ballpark. But at the end of the day, the normalize is a correction to kind of make up for variations and recording levels from session to session. So bottom line, try to record with proper levels, get it as close as you can, allow the normalize to make that little calibration, that little tweak. If you're doing um, processing with a stack or something like that, that's my philosophy on on the whole thing. Okay. So, and you're right just, too. It's part of a process. It's part of a workflow. If you're a great engineer, you're probably not also a great voice actor. There are some exceptions, but great voice actors have a really hard time being really great at other things because they're really great voice actors. It takes hours and hours of practice to be a really great voice actor. You're right. And years, years. to be a good engineer a, as well as a good It's a that whole 10,000 hours thing, right? Right. I mean, very few of us have mastered both. So, you know, a guy like John, who's the fellow we are talking about, mm-hmm. uh, the engineer friend of ours, he guy's a master engineer. He is. And he is a perfectionist, and his job is to get the best audio quality possible. And that's what he wants from you guys as voice actors. Right. You know, that's what he wants you to do. Right. It's just not always possible yeah. to get that. I, I think the argument was also about audiobooks. And if you yeah. if you're a producer that doesn't produce audiobooks, then perhaps that's not something you should comment on. Yeah, audiobook production has its own hang ups and a lot of it has to do with the fact that it doesn't pay very well. No. And it's a it's a numbers game. Right. It's kind of a marathon. And you have to be able to turn out a lot of product quickly to, to do okay exactly. in audiobooks. So. Okay. Well, now that we've bored you to tears, uh, we have a much more exciting segment coming up. Sylvia Vilgron will be with us in just a moment. We're going to talk about her career and the great stuff that she does and how she switches up from English to Spanish to whatever else she, she tries to do. And uh, that's coming up, and we'll be taking your questions as well here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Do not go away quite yet. Hi, you VO friends. You say you ain't booked a VO gig in seven years? And your demo is so old that you can hear the clicks from the stock music records? And you hear so much tape hiss that you run to the sink to see if the faucet is running? And the engineer used so much echo on your voice that it sounds like it was recorded in the Grand Canyon? And the scripts seem a bit dated, too. Advertising the new and improved 1938 Plymouth Road King? (gasps) Is that what's been troubling you, Bunky? Well, lift your head up high and take a walk in the sun. Your demo can be killer, too. Just contact Uncle Roy at atlandproductions.com and book yourself a shiny new killer demo. Show your stick-to-itiveness and show the world. You'll never give up, never give up, never give up. That dream... You're competing for work with other voice talents, and every one of them has a powerful, unique, engaging voice demo. Your voice demo needs to stand out from the crowd in an unforgettable way. Now it can. Visi Visual Voice Demos take your awesome voice demo and add a visual element, reinforcing your brand. Your demo will leave a lasting impression because it stimulates two senses instead of just one. Your voice is your livelihood. You need an effective demo to open doors of opportunity. Blow those doors down with a Vizzy visual voice demo. Visit VizzyDemos.com for more information. Your audio demo never looked so good. Take your voice demos to the next level, a visual level, with Vizzy visual voice demos. Vizzy Demos introductory pricing extended through the end of April. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. 
Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. All right. You know, I was talking with David H. Lawrence the 17th this week, which I, I see him like once a month at the Voices Anonymous meetup in Burbank. And we talk about all sorts of cool stuff. But, uh, I mean, he's got some great stuff. He's got VO2GoGo.com, which I can talk about very briefly. You know, it's a great time uh, to you know get involved and, and take some classes. But he also has the Rehearsal Pro app. And it's a great time to get Rehearsal Pro because in just a few short weeks, there's going to be a brand new feature on Rehearsal Pro that's going to blow you away. And we're going to give you access to a new community of actors and voice talent where you can offer your services as a professional to help others with their rehearsing and scene exploration. And so go over to Rehearsal Pro, the app for actors and voiceover talent, and it's available at rehearsal.pro forward slash download, and you can get it there. But he's got something else that's coming up. I believe we're going to start talking about it in May or June. He's going to be teaching on-camera classes for voice actors. You know, I mean, normally he's talking about, well, you can, you know, as a voice actor, you can do audio books and things like that, but he's going to be teaching people, you know, people who are voice actors primarily how to start doing on-camera auditions and maybe get some on-camera work, which is actually kind of cool. So go over to uh, vo2gogo.com or to rehearsal.pro to get David H. Lawrence's the 17th, can't miss the 17th, his rehearsal app. All right, Sylvie Vilgrand going to be up in just a sec, so stay tuned. VOBS is still on? Seriously? In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS and VOBS.TV. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Voiceover Body Shop. I love when they talk BS about you. Man, there's one show that I can't miss. It's called VOBS. And a lot of people are like, VOBS? What is that? That is BS about VO. And I love VO. How much BS is going to be in this show? There's only one way to find out, baby. Well, let me introduce our guest. A native Angelino, Sylvia Vilgrand grew up with the only Spanish spoken in a, in a, an only Spanish spoken in the home rule. And now, thanks to her parents, her serious bilingual for she thanks her parents for her serious bilingual skills. I got to clean the glasses. This is getting pretty bad. Those skills, along with the ability to switch her voice from sophisticated to urban hip, have made Sylvia one of the most versatile voice actresses working today in both English and the Spanish market. Let's welcome Sylvia Vilgran. Nice to see you. So I, great to see it's you. It's great to have you here. Thank you. That's that's very interesting. You know, like I, I like my father's family only spoke spoke Yiddish. Okay. So I mean and, but he never spoke Yiddish. I hear there's a big Yiddish voiceover market out there. I'm, so I'm I don't know. That might uh, that might work out for you. Well we'll we'll, we'll see. But <laughs> my father didn't speak it, but you know, that's all my that's all my Bubby and Zeta said, spoke. But anyway. Mm -hmm. So growing up in L.A., yes. in, an, in a, in a Spanish-only speaking house, yes. give us a little bit more details on that. I mean, what, the rule was you couldn't speak English in the house. Well, I mean, my dad didn't, they didn't speak English at home. I mean, that was just kind of a, you know, just kind of a thing. And I, I didn't realize that that was different until I was older. Ah, you okay. know, you just kind of grow up, you know, speaking and living your life, and it's not until you go out into the world and you realize, oh, that's not how everybody else lives, and this isn't the way, you know. So, yeah, that was my my experience was I would watch uh, television at home in Spanish. I would listen to, you know, Spanish-language radio. and um, But then when I went out into the world with, you know, at school with my friends, everybody spoke English. English. And so... Um, but at the time, it was a very different time where my um, my parents, you know, th and th and thank goodness for that. My um, my father was very he's a stickler about 
we're going to speak Spanish at home. Because once I started going into school, um, the teachers said to my parents, I think you're doing Sylvia a great disservice in speaking to her in Spanish. She really needs to speak English. And my dad said, no. (laughs) <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. And he said that in English, though. <laughs> no, if, if he spoke, if he would have spoken English, he would have said it in English. Um, so, if it would not have been for my dad, I would probably have lost. I would have lost my Spanish. Ah. So, um, so yeah, I was I was kind of forced to continue to speak Spanish at home and. Here I am. And there you are. And there I am. So, all right, so, so you grew up in L.A. Yes. Which is odd because most of the people I know since yes. I'm moving here a couple, you know, about 20 months ago. Yes. Nobody's from here. Nobody's from here. <laughs> what, I'm from here. So what was it like growing up in L.A.? How was it, what was the experience like? See, that's really, you know, here's, here's the interesting thing. The majority of people that are not from here um, or who are from other areas of the country or the world, their their experience of LA is you know what you see on television. So it right. would be like the, you know the West Side right. or Malibu or Rodeo Drive or Hollywood. Right. And see, for me, Los Angeles is so much more exciting and so much more full and beautiful than that. And it's such a such an amazing. Um, I I think it's an amazing city. And there's pretty much anything you want to do. There's there is to do here. Uh, I mean, you can, in July, there's the Lotus Festival in Echo Park. Um, you can go to the mountains and go skiing uh, in two hours. Or you can get to the beach in in 30 minutes. Um, depending on traffic. On depending the on traffic, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and you can be home in 30 minutes or four hours, depending <laughs> on the traffic. Um, but there's so many beautiful things here and so many amazing, and you know, now... Downtown LA is, you know, just a, such a such an amazing, you know, area, and um, there's just a lot of things to do. You know, lots of great restaurants and great great eateries, and you can go from like super high end to great taco trucks. So yeah, yeah, it's just, I mean, I I I love the city. I really do. Yeah. Which neighborhood so, did you grow up in? I actually grew up in downtown LA. Oh, okay. Um, right in, downtown. Right in downtown LA, yeah. and I actually lived. Uh, in an area called Pico Union, mm-hmm. and I would work. I worked in the movie theaters in downtown uh, L.A., what at the time were Spanish-language movie theaters. So I worked at the United Artists before. it. Now it's a hotel. but um, And prior to that, it was a church for Dr. Gene Scott. For anybody who's like, lo- you know, a long time ago, Gene Scott was like this really funky, crazy guy, uh, like a TV preacher. Everybody... All the transplants here are like, like what are you, <laughs> what are you saying, crazy lady? Uh, anyway, so and I and I um, and I used to work at the at the Rialto and at the Globe and at the Roxy and the wow. Palace, and uh, and the Tower Theater was like black exploitation movies and kung fu movies. Oh, so I grew Blackula up, and things like yes, that. Yeah, Shaft and you know Enter the Dragon and. So, so. Big fan. Lots of fun stuff. Yes. So, so you had a great cultural upbringing. Yes, I did. And seeing lots of multicultural stuff. Yes. What got you into voiceover? Okay, so voiceover. That's a good question. Henceforth, my asking you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, hmm. I think it was an accident. Okay. It was an accident. Like, I think most Not an people, uncommon story, by the way. Yeah, yeah, I don't think anybody goes, I want to be a voiceover actor. <laughs> I think now people, you know, but at the time, you know, I I, I was not a good student. Um, I wasn't interested in school. I shouldn't say I wasn't. I was a good student when I wanted to be, but I wasn't interested. There was nothing that really caught my attention. I really loved people. I loved learning about people. I was really good at one-on-one um, I had great interpersonal skills, and that didn't work so well in my classes. So <laughs> the teachers kind of got pissed at me. So um, school bored me. And then I tried starting businesses. I had like a jewelry business for a little bit. And I, um, and then I moved to Southern Oregon to visit a girlfriend of mine. And uh, I ended up, you know, staying there for a little bit. And through a series of events, I ended up... Um, applying for a job there 
for their, at the time, cable access channel. Oh, remember those? Ra yes. <laughs> yes, and it was a radio station at Simulcast, the radio station with the cable access, and they needed a camera person to run their cameras and lighting. And so, you know, with my extensive background in camera and lighting, I decided mm -hmm. to apply. And so because I was from the city and I was like... <laughs> Uh, I got the job right away. You're quick on your feet. Yeah. Total. Yeah. Quick oh, I'm on from your LA. Yeah. Yeah, I know how to and do then, all this. You no, know, well, and you know, I was just like, I was really, I was very personable, and I know that the guy really, you know, he thought I was funny, and I, um, and I said, absolutely. Do you know how to run a camera? Absolutely. Do you know how to do? Of course I do. So he got me the job. He gave me the job, and after about three months, oh my lord, that it was one of the it was the most boring. It was literally a green like. It was like one corner of yeah. like um, of wallpaper. One yeah. wallpaper was um, pine trees, and then the other one were like mountains. And like so, a it was, dentist office. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and it was me with the camera, and it was like, you know, pan, zoom, zoom out, pan, <laughs> zoom, zoom out, and then it was you know Jim Brothel. Mm -hmm. Jim Brothel was the host, and it was a phone with like five lines and with the, with the pencil, and he would, and you know the, the they would light on, so it would zoom into the into the phone and zoom out, and then pan on Jim, you know. So it was it, it zoom on Jim, zoom out. So the, after about three months, the GM said to me, "Listen, I have a a DJ at the time, and we were we weren't on air personalities; we were DJ." DJ's going on vacation. Would you be interested in filling in? And I said, let me think about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so... Get me off of this camera! Yes. So I got... I, I, um, they trained me for about a month. I went on. I was horrible. And that's how I started. And then I moved back to L.A. because I was tired of getting minimum wage. And it was awful. But before I moved, here's the, here was the story. I, as you know, in radio, local radio... You have to do sales. You have to do production. But that's you real do, local radio. Yes, I it's mean. total local radio. So I had to do everything. So it was like the razor blade with the with the wax, you know, with the, the wax, grease pencil, right. with the mm -hmm. grease pencil, and you know, uh, uh, doing the production and everything. So I was doing sales, and I and I met this disc jockey who did the evening, you know, evening show, and he was amazing. And he had come from L.A. and he was. Like he had all this experience. He had escaped. He had escaped. <laughs> and he was like, the, we had a lot of old hippies in Southern Oregon at the time growing weed and, you know, back before it was like legal. And um, so he, he was living in L.A. I mean, and yeah, for, for a while. And he had a pretty great voiceover career, apparently. And, and he had done, his claim to fame, he had done the Coppertone uh, national television mm -hmm. commercial. And so he told me the story on how he made, I think, like $50,000 at that time, okay? And yeah. I said, wow, that's like a lot of money. What an amazing thing. Like, how do you do that? He goes, well, and he told me this. So here's the urban legend he told me. Okay. He said, if you put together a demo and you send it to a an agent, then the agent then says, you know, I like this person. I'll rep them, and they'll represent you. So then they'll send you audition, and if you book the audition, they will pay you to do a commercial. What a concept. And I said, okay, so hit me again, because I don't think I got that. <laughs> like, they're going to pay me to do a commercial that, like, I do all day, every day for free, for nothing? And he's like, yeah. And I said, okay, so how do I do this demo? And that's where it started for me. And... um what I learned from him was um, to take brutally honest direction. And he was brutally honest. And that was how it started for me. Because when I did the demo, he thought it was awful and he told me it was awful. And um, I kept going back. You know, I kept practicing and yeah, that's well, how I, uh, so there you go. So what were some of the early projects you worked on that got you noticed that Got you where you are today, or at least back then until today. Um, it didn't work like that for me. Okay. It did not work. Do for tell. Me. Yeah, it didn't work for it for, for that way. Um, it it was 
you know, for me, um, voiceover is, I mean, from voiceover is a business. Absolutely. So um, the way I worked this is, it was like a business uh, and is like a business. And I still work it like a business. And I do have experience. That, that's kind of where I come from. And I have two I have two big strikes against me. One is that I am a woman. And two is that I am Latina. And both of those things were not in any way a part of the of the <clears throat> voiceover landscape when I started. This did not exist. What I do and who I am did not exist. So therefore, if it did not exist, then it, you had to invent it. Yeah, I had to. Exactly. I had mm -hmm. to create my own thing. And in order to do that, you have to get in the door mm -hmm. and you don't get in the door with big projects. You don't just land, you know, I got Verizon or I got, you know, it doesn't work that way. It starts with interpersonal. And for people who think that it's about, you know, having a great demo and having a great sound, you know, great voice. Yes, that's important. But you have to have the interpersonal skills. If you suck at interpersonal skills, you're not going to work. You got to got to communicate with people. Yeah, you mm -hmm. got to be you got to be nice. You got to be hardworking. You got to show up on time. You have to be responsible, and um, and you got to do you got to do a little bit more than what you're asked. Um, so that's how it started for me, was. Um, through, you know, a little project and then another little project. And then after like 10 little projects, all the people that I worked with, whether they were the clients or the producers or the engineers, they remembered me because I was nice or because I did a little extra or because I stayed a little longer or, you know, they needed it. They needed a favor. Mm -hmm. So I would, you know, I would do a demo for them or I would do a scratch track on something, things that people at the time weren't doing. And I, I did all of that. So, um, yeah, that's how and, it, Oh, good. And, 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 and they started hiring you for other stuff. And, yes, they did. So what type of stuff are you doing right now? You're obviously doing, you're doing bilingual work. So yes. at national commercials and, and. I do. I do a lot of, I do commercials. I've, mo my main thing is promos, promos and commercials. So uh, I do a little bit of animation, but that's not really my. My focus um, and little video games, but right now um, I'm the promo voice for. Uh, I'm one of the many promo voices. I do stuff for um, Turner Classic Movies. I do stuff for Disney, uh, Disney Channel, Disney Junior. Um, I do stuff for Telemundo in English. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm sorry in Spanish for Telemundo. So, yeah, that's no. what I'm no. doing yeah, now. Pr promo's not an easy thing to get into. No, We've had other not. promo people on the show, mm -hmm. and they're, it's like it's a handful of people yes. that are doing this. And everybody wants to get into it because yes. they think it's such great work. It's a lot of work, though. It is and, a lot and you're, of work. And you have to be on call and stuff. Mm -hmm. and yeah, so. absolutely. And that's the other thing is that it is a fallacy that, you know, oh, once you're there, you know, my life is good. I've made it. It's all good. I mean— you know, there's, I'm sure you've heard the term, the golden handcuffs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it really is that. You can't really go too far from your studio. You really have to be available, um, you know, at a moment's notice. If your client needs you, you need to be able to, like, turn something around. I have a lot of clients that I service, and so, yeah, they have to, you know, I have to be available to them. Mm -hmm. So it keeps me within a a, a, a a certain radius of my home, a home studio or a studio right. uh, in order to be able to get, you know, to turn around uh, promo work. So, mm. yeah. so what do you have in your studio to uh, to record with? You use different mics? You're using a 416 and all those See, things? See, I or? knew, I knew that this whole <laughs> conversation so we, we was only just get going the... to go right into the technical. We're sneaking right? up on yeah. it. You <laughs> snuck it in because it was like, oh, tell me about LA. Tell me about it. And it's like, no, what are you recording on? <laughs> I know. I know. I got it. Um, well, you know, I do because of the the kind of work that I do, and I work with a lot of the same, kind of the same studios, I do not veer from, it's the 416 Sennheiser, that's it. That's all I do. I have an extra one that I travel with mm -hmm. because um, if I do have to, 
you know, work remotely or at another studio, I have it with me. But for the most part, that is sort of the industry standard for, I think, all all studios. Mm-hmm. Um, and pretty much all network promo is kind of the 416. Although, you know, other, other people use the, the Neumanns, but, right. but I, I don't. I think that that's kind of the one that everybody works yeah. with. We, we've discovered that most of the studios that we go to, they're they're using 416. Yeah. But I mean, they have you know a full yeah. locker of other things. But of uh, course. Uh, yeah. But uh, you know, so if that's one of the things I think that that I think a lot of people don't understand is, yeah. you know, a lot of people obsess about doing stuff on the road. Yeah. And if you're not doing promo, right? Why bother? Exactly. You know, you know, like you said, you've got these golden handcuffs on them where you if you go on the road. You've got to be able to respond to something fairly quickly. Absolutely. But most other people, well, I've got to get this audition. I'm like, eh, it, it doesn't no, you really don't. matter. No. You, know, you really only have to worry about this stuff if you're doing that's real time sensitive stuff. Right. And then if you're, and then I would say if you have an audition, a last minute audition that is a, you know, it's let's say it's due by I don't know, uh, it's due by ten o'clock tomorrow morning, and you're out somewhere, it's. So much better if you deliver a a really good quality audition than if you deliver it early. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's not really going to matter if if your agent um, takes a listen to your read and you did it in the back of your car and you were stressed and you were on your way to you know dinner or whatever, and it it doesn't sound great. Um, you know, and you're not, you're not, you're not feeling great. Not that it doesn't sound great because you're, you know, you've got a good little uh, recording studio, but right. because you're, you know, you're not really fully present. It's better that you go to dinner, do your thing and record it when you get home. Yep. You know, so that, that way you're there, you can kind of relax and turn in a great quality audition. Yeah. Now, one of the things that, you know, that talks about it on your website is okay. you, you're, the ability Uh-oh. to switch from being, you know, urban hip. Yeah. I have no idea what that is. Uh, <laughs> not being very urban or very hip. Uh, but uh, I don't know. You, know. you kind of look urban and hip to me. Okay. Well, fine. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, <laughs> but to going to standard American English. Yes. Does that happen like within the same session or? No, okay. no, no, no. Very rarely. I mean, for the most part, I have, I mean, I have uh, so many, I mean, like I said, my clients are so completely diverse. I'll do anything from super, you know, super uh, like a young, um, edgy uh, read to, you know, a very sort of vanilla you know, announcer, very serious to, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, it just it just depends on what my client wants. What right. my client wants, I deliver. That's right. That's it. And, you know? you know, and it's always nice when they bring another script in and go, oh, by the way, can you do this one? And, and I always say, absolutely. That's right. 100%. Say yes. Absolutely. Never always s- say yes. Never say no to work. Never. <laughs> never. Oh, my God. For me, it is... Um, to this day, I am so, I feel so lucky that I get to do this for a living that I don't care, I don't care what I'm asked to do. I will absolutely do it 100%. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know, they kept me longer and I had another thing. And it's like, I don't care. Right. I don't care. I am there to please the client. What the client wants is what I will deliver. It, it it's I don't care if um I don't agree with their particular direction, if maybe the way the copy is written doesn't flow. It's my that's my job. Right. That's my job. My job is not there to critique or to give advice. My job is to deliver what it is that they want. Right. As we were saying earlier, as producers are saying, eh, don't don't do it. <laughs> Just let us do what we do, yeah. and, but, but respect the talent, you know, yeah. and that and that that's important. Um, how do you manage your career? Uh, you were saying, as you were saying, as as we've discussed on this show many many times, mm-hmm. this is a business. You are an entrepreneur. You are yeah. out there getting your work, and you are doing your billing and all that sort of thing. Right. What, what's what's your, your management style like for your own career? What do you need to I'm do? I'm very hands-on. I'm, I'm completely, um, 
uh, when it comes when it comes to my career, um, there is a there is a word in Spanish that does not exist in English. Okay. Okay, and that word is called acomedido. And what acomedido means for my, you know, Spanish language brethren out there, uh, acomedido is somebody who is, um, who does more than what they're asked, who is um, of service. If you see, if you go to someone's, uh, you go to your, you know, your family's house and there's dishes in the dish, in the, in the sink, you wash the dishes. You see that there is trash needs to be taken out. You take out the trash. It's akin to opening somebody's door or, you know, secret to a seat. good marriage too, by the way. Absolutely. It's being uh, acomedido. Okay. Uh, so I'll remember, I'm um, going to write that on my, yes. I'm being acomedido. Acomedido. That's acomedido. right. And being acomedido, I think you can then translate that into your business and into your life, into work. And that is when you are asked to do something, you always think about how can I be of service to the other person? I never, ever think of my career as, how can I be famous and how can I make a lot of money? That is completely not even, that is completely separate. My job is to make the product and the client shine. That is my, like, 100% my goal and, uh, during a session. So my question to the client is, tell me what you want. Tell me how you want me to pronounce. You know, a lot of times people want their, you know, their, the product pronounced a specific way. Mm -hmm. um, what tone do you want? Do you want it young? Do you want it, you know? Now, if, if you only do one particular read, then you, you don't really vary from that. In my case, because I have so many different, um, uh, a lot of times they'll ask me to do, okay, give that to me with, you know, I want, you know, super young, uh, super excited, um, urban, uh, and you know, you're like going to, you're going to Vegas with your girlfriends, you know, and you've got something, you know, short, bright, tight and plunging and you're like, woo, you know, so do that. Or, you know, you're like this businesswoman and you, or you're a mom. So whatever it is that they want, I will 100% deliver. So there's that aspect of it. And then in terms of, um, in terms of my relationship with my agent and the client, I am super hands-on. I expect, and they and my agent knows that I'm. I expect direction. Like I send them an email and I'll go, take a listen. If I suck, please let me know. I open the door for feedback. Feedback welcome. And you know, there have been times when they'll go, you know, uh, we like take three give me two more like that. Or, you know what? That sounds too, too announcery. Let's do something. I need you to veer from that. Um, because what I have, what I found is that a lot of people don't like taking direction. Like they do what they do and then that's it. And if you don't invite that, if you don't invite feedback from your clients, from your, um, from the, from the, um, from the directors, from the producers, and from your agents, and they're not gonna they're not gonna tell you because, you know, you're not asking. Right. If you don't ask, then they're just gonna assume that you don't really want to know, because who wants to tell you? You know what? That kind of sucked. That wasn't really that wasn't really that good. That was not your best delivery, right. and they're no one's gonna hire you. Right. Um, Unless you're on Broadway and you're uh, in front of a bunch of dancers. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Good point. <laughs> but see, that all goes back to when I was in Southern Oregon with Bob Jeffries, you know, my, you know, my Your DJ mentor, my DJ mentor yeah. who did, you know, uh, all these voiceovers back in the day. And he, you know, he would tell me, okay, that sucks. Do it again. That's, that's got to be brutally honest. I mean, that's yeah. how you learn by making mistakes. Absolutely. Right. If anybody's got a question for Sylvia, I'm sure they've got plenty <laughs> out there. Oh, yeah. And we've got a few that Jack Daniel just gave me the thumbs up on. Okay. And uh, we'll answer some of our vast audience's questions. Vast uh, audience? Vast. <gasps> we are worldwide. They're watching in Australia, New Zealand, the Canary Islands. Really? Absolutely. You thought this is some little webcast. Anyway, know, we'll be right great. back here on Voice Over Body Shop with Sylvia Vilgras. Don't go away. <laughs>
Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We picked the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. Here we are inside the bagel. Sounds a little roomy. I'm just ad-libbing. The ad-lib light was on, you know? <laughs> All right. Learn the latest in voiceover technology, business, and good old-fashioned acting. I really like your bracelet. It's awesome. Hey, Paul, where did you get that watch? Um, that's really cool. And a hamburger with no cheese, please. Every Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, Pacific. only on voiceoverbodyshop.com. Having dinner tonight? How about having some VO, too? Voiceover Body Shop. Have some voiceover with your dinner tonight on Voiceover Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Pacific. One of my favorite parts of the show is talking about our good friend Harlan Hogan and his amazing website, voiceoveressentials.com. Why? Because he's got so much great stuff. For example, Andrew, show the audience camp here, the ca audience cam. As you can see, right behind our, everybody, right above all my microphones is you can see the color-changing voiceover recording sign, which we talked about last week. It's great, and you can change all the colors, and it's really cheap. Like 49 bucks. I won't say it's cheap. It's cheaper than the original, which was like 69 bucks. but now it's only $49. It's affordable. It's affordable, it's and, affordable. And, and he'll ship it free to you for that price, which is even more amazing. But also, one of the things that George and I did is we've been, oh, we're always playing with microphones. And one of the microphones we've always used on the show is the Harlan Hogan VO1A. So show George in front of the Harlan Hogan VO1A there. Do you have a shot wide enough to get that in the shot, Andrew? I don't know if I don't know if you got that, but well, but but there it is. I can hang it down a little bit. Okay, there it is. Okay, there it is. The it's upside down, by the way. The Harlan Hogan VO1A, and it uh, a great microphone at a great price point. It's designed for voiceover. So if you want to have a great mic and you're like, well, what's the best mic for for voiceover at a great price point? there's one that you should choose because it's great on women's voices, it's great on men's voices, it's great on your dog's voice if you happen to be using your dog for auditions. But it will sound great with anybody. So check that out. He's got all of these products at the VoiceOver Essentials uh, website. And you can see it right there. There's his, the legendary Porta Booth and the sign that we were just talking about, the Porta Booth Pro, the Porta Booth Plus, uh, Lots of other things to support the those particular items, the, the microphone, the uh, and the headphones, the sig signature series Harlan Hogan signature series headphones. So, go over there, VoiceOverEssentials.com. The best place to do it is from right on our website. Just go to the bottom of the page, like I do every week, and you will be able to click on the icon of Harlan talking into his Porta Booth Pro, and it will take you right to their website, and it'll let him know that you were watching our show. How did I make that rhyme without even thinking Well about done, it? sir. All right, thank you. Anyway, thanks, Harlan, for being our sponsor for 74 episodes so far of VoiceOver Body Shop and, you know, all the years prior to that with our former uh, incarnation. Anyway, we'll be right back with Sylvie Vilgran and your questions. Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We picked the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. You're competing for work with other voice talents, and every one of them has a powerful, unique, 
engaging voice demo. Your voice demo needs to stand out from the crowd in an unforgettable way. Now it can. Busy visual voice demos take your awesome voice demo and add a visual element, reinforcing your brand. Your demo will leave a lasting impression because it stimulates two senses instead of just one. Your voice is your livelihood. You need an effective demo to open doors of opportunity. Blow those doors down with a Vizzy visual voice demo. Visit VizzyDemos.com for more information. Your audio demo never looked so good. Take your voice demos to the next level, a visual level, with Vizzy visual voice demos. Vizzy Demos introductory pricing extended through the end of April. Minus four, are we at minus four dB? We're at minus four dB on VOBS. Learn the latest in voiceover technology. Business. That good old fashioned actor. Hey, Paul, I really like your suit. Where did you get it? It looks good on you. This is VOBS. And we are back here on Voiceover Body Shop. Every Monday, it's fabulous. Always having, always great having great guests and people who have interesting Thank stuff you. to say and and stuff to teach. All of you out there who are struggling to make it in the voiceover world, and those of you who have done your struggling and you're just doing it. Anyway, George, we've got a few questions, don't we? We do. Why don't you first? Lead we there was a little thing we were talking about during the break. Oh uh, yes, to address. Um, do ask. Yes. It came up in the chat room. I was reading the chat room, and okay. somebody said. I hear a little something in her voice that maybe is a hint that she it, might be a Spanish a speaker. Slight lilt of, of really? Latina. And I said, and I saw, I said to Sylvia, I was like, mm. when you're speaking now, extemporaneously, relaxed, yeah. you know, are you doing a Sylvia? As, this is obviously you, the authentic Sylvia. Right. When you're doing American, whatever, putting on the American Sylvia. Is right. that a put on Sylvia voice where you turn the dial, peg it to American, whatever you want to call it? Or <laughs> yes. is it just you? Just you speaking as you know? It is, it is definitely just me because, yeah. again, I was, since I was born and raised in L.A., so at this point now, English is my first language. Sure it is, yeah. But, but uh, I mean, um, when I do, when I do uh, Spanish language work, it's a completely different thing. But, no, yeah, this is yeah. it. This is me. Yeah. And you, but you have that amazing ability to switch the dial yes. or flick the switch. Absolutely. It's not even, is for you, is it a dial? Can, do you ever have to do a blend? Yeah, a lot of times, oh, yeah, sometimes clients will ask me for, you know, a little bit of an accent. And so at that right. point I can do that or yeah. I can do, you know, a full on, uh, like, I, and you can do like <laughs> Sofia Vergara. Right. You know, so that's, right. that's also, you know, something yeah. that I can, I can do if they, if they ask, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, or I can make it, you know, make my, my voice deeper. Yeah. Um, or I can make it younger. Mm -hmm. Like I said, there's a lot. Of Acting. Different. Acting. It would be called <laughs> Acting. Acting. <laughs> Acting, George. Well, that was my inane question. Now let's get to the chat room question. All right, let's get to the chat room. Let's yeah. get to the and real questions. From I'll start with the first these, one. From, we'll... the, from, the, from the, you know, from the... Uh, uh, the general public who really need to know the truth. These guys are right. very hanging Tell on every like word. They are hanging on every word. Uh, Isa Lopez says, uh, as a fellow bilingual voiceover talent, I was Hi, told... Hi, Isa Lopez. Hey. I was told it's almost impossible to be represented in New York or L.A. because if you don't live there and they want to walk in, they, they want, want walk, in, walk audition. in auditions. Is this true still now with technology? You know, okay, so that's a great question. In that's your experience, obviously. Yes, that's a great question, Isa. And I know for a fact that it is uh, it is difficult to be represented uh, from, you know, some of the big agencies, i.e. Los Angeles, New York, if you don't live in the area. However, I have found that that's relaxing a little bit. So there is a possibility. I know that there are some agencies who you know, take only um, uh, remote auditions. But a lot of times, because if, you know, if if you don't live in L.A., um, it would be difficult because sometimes clients do want you here. Um, in what I do in promo, I would say probably 90% of my work is remote. But in commercial, a lot of times they still do want you to come in. You know, so... 
I guess, you know, it would it would tie it would tie your agent's hands a little bit that you're not um, in town, but it is not an impossibility. And if you are able to um, if you are able to have a uh, a really, really good um, reputation and you have good clients and you are doing, you know, good work, I think that then um, then you become attractive to agencies. So many times that will work to, you know, in your favor. Um, but you definitely have to have something to bring in. You can't just be, you know, just a voiceover actor who doesn't live in town. They're going to tell you no. I mean, it's hard enough to get signed by an agent. So you really have to come in with something. There's got to be something uh, that you're bringing in. Because remember, this is a business you know, that's the other thing is that if, if you're thinking that you're going to go into your agent and, you know, they're going to go, oh, my God, you've got such a great voice and I'm going to sign you. No, that's not going to happen. You need to you need to fill a very specific niche that they're needing. So, for instance, um, you know, there was there was um, a lot of times I'll hear, you know, through the grapevine, they're looking for male uh, 18 to 22, 23. That's what they're wanting. And so if you are a voiceover actor who's 18 to 22, 23. I love getting those auditions. Then <laughs> you're probably going to be signed by an agency. But if, um, you know, but if you're a, I don't know, a 50-year-old woman who is just starting out and you do a little voiceover, uh, you know, no. Like you really have to, you have to come in with something. There's got to be something compelling about you. You have, you, you already have clients. You have, uh, uh, you know, a great demo or demos. Um, you know, your, your shit's tight. Like you gotta, you gotta have your shit tight. You can't just come in with like, I do voiceover work and I have a demo. Yeah. Look at my cool logo. Look at my cool logo. Look at my cool web. <laughs> thing to offer you know are you going to be waiting for your agent to do the work for you or you are you out hustling how do you how do you get work for yourself you know what's your interpersonal skills how are you going out and generating you know excitement for you are you you know uh are you kind of a laid back um kind of person waiting for people to give you work or are you out hustling so that's that's the business. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, Isa. that works. That works. <laughs> uh, Efren Gonzalez asks: On average, how is your workload? Fifty percent Spanish, fifty percent English. Uh, do you see the balance tip more to one side than the other? Uh, you know, it just it a lot of times it depends. Sometimes I'm like completely dead uh, for Spanish. I, I will get nothing. Um, and then even as much as that's a huge emerging market that it's, it's really growing. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, and then there's trends, you know, I mean, I, I think everybody knows about trends. There's trends in everything. There's trends in Spanish, there's trends in English. So I'll let's, let's focus on English for a little bit. So there's trends where they'll go, well, we want raspy, um, you know, for a while it was like that raspy thing Yeah. and <sighs> we really want the, we want that. And so, you know, everybody who's raspy, everybody who's not, t you know, sitting in the back of the bus. So, you know, you wait your turn. So we're just like, OK, I guess I could kind of try to do a raspy, you know, and um, and then you just kind of wait. And then the next trend is, you know, right now, as we know, is no announcers. No, no, no announcers. So, Dang. yeah. So it's no <laughs> announcers, real people only. Um, and so. Th th that has something to do, you know, with our, our trends. The same thing in Spanish. Right now, what I've found the trends in Spanish is that there are a lot, a lot of work for younger bilingual men. A lot of work for young bilingual men. Uh, they have the majority of like, um, you know, fast food and uh, cellular carriers, uh, you know, what else? Cars, that kind of thing. But again, I think, you know, you wait it out. It just is just like anything else. Then, you know, something else comes in and turns the tide. And then, you know, you just you're there when it when it happens. So. Well, I've got a question from my better half, Maxine Dunn. 
And she Hi, says, Maxine. She says, Hi, Sylvia. Uh, what is your. That's not the one I wanted. No, Sorry, the I one, wanted the one, the one underneath. Below. I'll ask it. There you, you, go. you ask it. <laughs> All right. Can you see the gray on the black? Yeah, I... sort of. Do you use 100% real work on your demos, or do you create spots sometimes to put on a demo? Right. So well, I think is... of real as an R E E L. Yes. Uh, uh. Real on your real. Yeah, yeah. Be okay, real. so. So that is a phenomenal question, and I will tell you that um, everything on my reel is real. Everything on my promo, everything on my commercial, everything on my affiliate work, live, uh, everything. However, however, there is no shame in your game when you're first starting out and you don't have anything. Create it. Fake it all. I don't care. That's what I did. I faked it all. I'm, you make it sound like it's fabulous and that you're fabulous and you're working. You make it work because um, it really is about, I mean, it's advertising, you know, it's illusion and you've got to make it look beautiful. And, you know, if you, if it looks real, uh, then that's, you know, you've got to, you've got to have that demo sound like you're really on the air. So, um, you know, how do you do that? So you can transcribe promos that are currently on the air and switch them up a little bit. Obviously, you can't like full on do, you know, transcribe it directly, but you can switch it up. Um, I did a lot of, you know, a lot of the print for like, uh, let's say Toyota or Honda or Verizon and transcribe that and, you know, take a print ad and make it into, an you know, a... Uh, uh, a voiceover script. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All righty. A uh, question from Tracy Reynolds. Uh, if a commercial is going to be done in English and Spanish versions, do you audition for both? Do you expect Sometimes. to do both? Sometimes. I see that a lot. And yes. That's actually become the norm now is that we get a lot of now bilingual. Uh, Old Navy does that a lot. Um, Toyota does that a lot. Uh, a, there, a lot of A lot of people do that. Um, when I was first starting, that didn't happen. I would only be auditioned for the Spanish and not for the general market. So that's changed a lot, thank goodness. It's very, it's it's very cool, you know, that we get those opportunities. And a lot of times, I'll get hired for one or the other. You know, that even though I'm I I I audition for both, sometimes they'll hire me just to do the English or the Spanish, and they'll hire somebody else to do, you know. The other side, so mm -hmm. yeah. Alrighty. Um Divox. Oh, Divox. No, he's always Divox is always trying to come up with a good question. <laughs> this right. one, this one tops it. All right. Uh, let's hear. Uh, let's see. Who's Divox? He is just a fan of ours. Fan of ours. Right. Been awesome. with us Hi, for years and always years. Here. He says, Can oh. you demonstrate some warm-up or vocal exercises for us in Spanish, por favor? <laughs> I don't. I don't have any. I don't have any. Um Good night, everybody. That's, that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> you know what? What I do do. Um, I will tell you though what my like what my sort of ritual is in the morning. Um, if you want, is that, sure. Would that work? Sure. I think okay. that would be helpful for a yeah. lot of people. Okay. So usually in the morning, I I drink a lot of water. I have tons and tons of water that I that I and I the only thing that I eat or drink that is, especially if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be working a lot that day is I have my one cup of coffee with half and half. How, how can anyone expect to live without half that? And I mean, half. Me too. I'm not supposed to have any kind of dairy when I'm, when I'm working because it creates a lot of mouth noise. Try and soy milk. No. Cashew no, milk. No, it's half Cashew and milk half. Is there fabulous. is like no, nothing, nothing but half and half will do. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I know where you're coming from. It's my thing. So I'll do my I'll do my coffee with the half and half. And then um but then after that it's just kind of I think once I get warmed up, you know, it's just drinking a lot of water and, and that's it. Um I try not to work too late. Um because at that at that point there's a little bit of a vocal, you know, being vocally tired. But um that's pretty much it. I try not to, I try not to scream too much if I'm out. Um, you know, I I try to get a lot of rest the night before. Right. Just really basic stuff. It's nothing. Yeah. You know. 
How do you balance family life? Because I know you, you've you've got a family too, and that's got to be that's that, that you've got to schedule things just yeah. right, don't you? Yeah, you know that's really the wonderful thing about what I do is because I work from home. It's so fantastic. You know, it is. It's a really, um, I I have a little trick that on Sunday, Saturdays and Sundays, I go and I grocery shop and I and I basically make all of my meals on Sunday, and I have you know I'll have like. God, you know, you're my, so disciplined. I am. Yeah. I'm so <laughs> teacher's pet. <laughs> yeah. I'm so fabulous. <laughs> I <know. laughs> no, I usually do like a pot of brown rice, and then I have like I grill. I'll grill. I'll grill like chicken or vegetables, and then during the week, and I make pasta. And so during the week, I'll have you know my brown rice. I'll have uh, I I I can put chicken in the you know in the in the pasta. I make salads, you know, so right. that's kind and of... And when all else fails, over to El Pollo Loco and exactly, life is good. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This one's from uh, Mike Martin, and okay. he asked, can you speak passable languages or maybe accents mm -hmm. of Spain? Like, Castilian? Is that how you Castilian, say it? Castilian, yeah. Castilian? That's a whole other thing, and I don't do that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really, my, you know, if, if, you, if you took... I don't know if you took uh, Italian or French in high school. Don't try to have a voiceover career in French or Italian. <laughs> just, don't you know? And that's not what I do. I mean, that's a yeah. completely different accent. I think yeah. that that's the other thing. If if you are, um, you know, Argentinian and you have an Argentinian accent, um, you're not going to get hired for for Spanish national commercials, and the, they're specifically looking for a, a, an Argentinian accent. Now, if you're able to neutralize that accent, then you know you're going to be able to to get work. Yeah. Um, but if 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 somebody asked me to do a Castilian accent, I'd say I can't. I can't. That's not what I do. I don't. You know, I can't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, yeah. we've run out of time. You know, we know how the wah, network wah, is, wah. Uh, but, but hang out with us. Maybe we can, you know, in our after show, we can answer a few more questions too. Sure. That'll be a lot of fun. Right. Uh, thanks for being with us. Thank tonight. you so Thank much you for, for finally coming us. all the way out here. Hi, everybody. And... Thank you so much for having me. All right. Thank you. It was great having you and great answers yeah. and, and <laughs> important information that everybody needs to know. So anyway, uh, George and I'll be right back to wrap things up into a nice tight little ball right after this. Learning never ends. You continue to grow. Edge Studio has grown. Pursue multiple disciplines in tandem and grow your career. We've added new courses in a new curriculum. We picked the best coaches from the community of working voice actors. A new technology division, engineering and consulting, led by George Whittem. Follow your dream. Sign up for advanced learning or register for an introduction to voice acting or foundation studies program. See it all now at the new edgestudio.com. Hiya, VO friends. You say you ain't booked a VO gig in seven years? And your demo is so old that you can hear the clicks from the stock music records? And you hear so much tape hiss that you run to the sink to see if the faucet is running? And the engineer used so much echo on your voice that it sounds like it was recorded in the Grand Canyon? And the scripts seem a bit dated, too. Advertising the new and improved 1938 Plymouth Road King? <gasps> Is that what's been troubling you, Bunky? Well, lift your head up high and take a walk in the sun. Your demo can be killer, too. Just contact Uncle Roy at AtlantProductions.com and book yourself a shiny new killer demo. Show your stick to and show the world. You'll never give up, never give up, never give up. That dream... You're competing for work with other voice talents, and every one of them has a powerful, unique, engaging voice demo. Your voice demo needs to stand out from the crowd in an unforgettable way. Now it can. Visi Visual Voice Demos take your awesome voice demo and add a visual element, reinforcing your brand. Your demo will leave a lasting impression because it stimulates two senses instead of just one. Your voice is your livelihood. You need an effective demo to open doors of opportunity. 
blow those doors down with a Vizzy visual voice demo. Visit VizzyDemos.com for more information. Your audio demo never looked so good. Take your voice demos to the next level, a visual level, with Vizzy visual voice demos. Vizzy Demos introductory pricing extended through the end of April. All right. Well, one of the things we forgot to ask Sylvia about was her shoes. Those are the best damn <laughs> yeah. shoes I've ever seen. Show them your shoes, Sylvia. The it's, it's right up the here. Audience shot. Oh, yeah, here. To the audience, audience shot. To the audience shot. The audience cam. There it is. There now can she pick? Are they? No, they're not in the shot, are they? No, no, okay. no. Go well, back. Go, go back to that oh, shot. Right. There, there we go. go. All right. <laughs> That's a pair of shoes. <laughs> That wasn't my idea. That was uh, somebody, somebody else's, else's who's It was name. not mine oh, as well. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> who are our donors of the week? Donors. Yeah, baby. We, we, we do appreciate the donors. We do get a lot of donations, despite the fact that we have uh, sponsors of the show. We continue to get donations, and it's really helpful because it just gives us that little extra, little extra booster. And it makes people feel like they're a part of something, which I think is really nice. So if you want to make a donation to the show, you can do one-offs or you can do a subscription. And a lot of people do that, like Patty Gibbons. She's a regular subscriber. Eric Aragoni. We've also got regular donations coming in from uh, Amanda Fellows. Thank you. And we also have Brian Page. These are names, if you guys know this, or you're watching the show or listen to it regularly, you got to start noticing, you hear these names regularly. Because even if you make a very small monthly donation, we still talk keep about you. saying your name. And when your name is said and circulated, it just starts sticking in people's minds. So maybe they have an idea. Maybe they, they get it. So Thomas Pinto is another one. So And uh, Shelly Avellino. And, and they just love hearing their names. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next week on this show, another big-time celebrity. Bill Farmer is going to be with us. Hey, man. A great voice actor, the voice of Goofy, and a lot of other stuff. Does a lot of animation work, and we're going to have a great time with him. Got yeah. to come up with some fun stuff to do with him. Oh, definitely. May uh, 8th, uh, J.J. Jurgens. She's a promo voice actor. It's he, Lady Promo Voice Actor Voice Actor Month. month. Right? Okay, yeah. cool. Well, actually, no, that's into May. <laughs> that's true. It's in May. You know, right. So it's like this spring season sort of Lady thing. Lady Promo Voice Get Actor, 30 days. Get 30 days. There you okay. go. Okay, yeah, <laughs> she'll be on, and I'll, I'll be on from Buffalo. Son's graduating from college. Cool. Uh, Wait, May isn't 15... that the week after that you're out of town? Uh, the... I'm going to be gone both. I'm going to be. I'm going to be out of town on the eighth. Oh, okay. And I'm not going to be back on the fifteenth. We'll be okay, flying cool. back, and I'll be desperately trying to get on the the so Wi-Fi. Do like, I got to watch the show, so I can. Do I'm doing the. Room. I'm doing actually doing the show awesome. from thirty thousand cool, feet. Cool, 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 cool. It'll never and then, happen. Um, <laughs> and then the week after that, that's when we've got Rick Wasserman and Rachel Butera. They're they're coaching together. Yeah. Interesting combination. That's going to be a great show because Lori Allen is also. They going to are be perfect for loyal lawyers. Going to be that's my going to be a nutty night. I'm sorry, I'm missing that <laughs> one. No alcohol required. Yeah. Uh, May May twenty second, Sarah Jane Sherman, recently head casting director for Disney. That's kind of cool. Some yeah. Different, you know, I love getting casting people in. That's kind of an interesting perspective that... They know what's going on. Yeah. They know what the trends are, and we really do want to talk to them about that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. By the way, if you want VOBS logo gear, mm -hmm. all you got to do is go, like, right up here, and there's this big red banner. Click on that. Anything you want with a VOBS logo is there. <laughs> and some things you probably shouldn't get... Yes. ...are in there. <laughs> I'll say no more. Yeah. Uh, we've also got an intro tonight that yeah. was provided by one of our viewers, Jeff, Jeff Bergonian. Bergonian. Yeah, you can too. But yeah, we're we're going to be do, redoing an, an, an intro, so maybe we'll do, we'll wait until we do that. Yeah. Do the new hang one. hang out until you see the new intro, and then and then start submitting your your versions. Yeah. We'll start. We'll start using them. All right. Show logs. The show logs. We've had show logs. Submitted to us by Jack DeGolia for how long now? A couple about, of about years. Five years, yeah. Man, so helpful to yeah. all of you guys that want to know what happened in that episode without having to review the hour and a half long episode. Right. And they're right on the show, right up top. There's a button for the show logs. Click on that and you can search through there for things that you want to learn about. That's right. What was specifically we said? Mm -hmm. What's going on at Edge? At Edge Studio, the latest thing right now is what's going on at Edge Studio technology. And that's what I most care about. 
because that's my department over at Edge. You can get to my department from edgestudio.com, but uh, our Edge Studio technology site, at least recently did a redesign. And if you go to the site right now, if you're watching it live, the, the way the site looks right now is not indicative of the redesign. There's actually a problem with the web server. <laughs> Perfectly timed while I uh, bring this up on the show. Don't go there till tomorrow morning. Check it out, Andrew. Show the uh, jacked up version of the website. But anyway, everything to do with technology is over there. And one of my favorite services is my uh, ask a question, get an answer for 19 bucks. Because a lot of people have questions. I would love to just sit at my desk all day and do nothing but answer questions. It's just too difficult to do it. But for 19 bucks, I can slot a little bit of my day into answering those questions and it's something that's a very inexpensive way to get a little bit of help. All righty. Also, take our survey. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure, you know, there's something, somebody you want to see on the show or something you, you really hate about this show, yet you keep showing up every week. <laughs> uh, let us know. What was uh, the thing about the Howard Stern? Remember the Howard Stern movie? The, the ratings were people that liked the show were this so many viewers, and right. the people that hated yeah. the show were With, so many more of the viewers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or listeners. Right, exactly. Maybe that's true. I'm never us. listening to your show again, and they'd say it every week exactly. when I would do my editorials and stuff. They want to see what you say next. Exactly. We have a podcast of our version of our show, which a lot of people like. I, I talk to a lot of people who listen in their car. I subscribe to it because I love to just hear the yourself. Hear with the, okay, because <laughs> I'm completely narcissistic. It's I've said it here first, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. No, it, it's it's a it's a fun way to consume the show, and I like to just check to see what the show sounds like in audio form so and it's sounding you, okay if, yeah it okay. sounds pretty decent if you're tired of watching the show because it's length doesn't fit in your schedule or you just have a hard time programming it in but you drive a lot the podcast version could be you absolutely. could be for you absolutely and again if you want to be in our studio like our vast studio audience tonight audience shot there dun, 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 dun. Dun. okay uh just write to us at the guys at vobs Dot TV. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to thank Marcy for sticking her head in tonight and for letting us be back here in the garage. <laughs> Our producer, Catherine Curridan, Anthony Gettig, uh, for not even though he wasn't here tonight, but Jack Daniel with a great job uh, on the, uh, the chat room tonight. Uh, also, our crack floor producer, Andrew Bushwitz. Great job tonight. This Guy man is working... Two full t as far as I know, he's working two full time jobs, and he still squeezes us in right. for now. And we appreciate it. <laughs> we have and to give him a raise. Yes, absolutely. And keep Jack those donations coming, ladies absolutely. and gentlemen. Absolutely, we got to keep that man in the chair. That's right. Uh, and Jack DeGolia for the show notes and uh, for all the work he does there, and of course Lee Pinney for simply being Lee Pinney. And he's got to come our, visit us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he's due. Our sponsor is Vizzy. Uh, Visi Video Demos. Harlan um, Hogan. That's right. VO Extra. Edge Studio. Source Elements. VO to Go Go and Rehearsal App. And finally, Antland's Killer Demos for providing, or helping us provide an uninterrupted, uninterrupted live stream with a lot of bandwidth. All right. Well, George and I are going to take a road trip tomorrow. Yeehaw. This is going to be fun. We've done this before. <laughs> drive to Vegas is always fun. Uh, you know, stop in Barstow. Go make sure you stop at the Fat Burger in Barstow and stuff like that. Maybe we'll start try some other place this time. We can find some vegetarian fare. <laughs> anyway, we'll have some reports from NAB next week, and yep. uh, we're going to have a great time there. And uh, remember, this isn't an easy business. You really have to work at it, like Sylvia Vilgram was telling you. Yeah. Practice, practice, practice. See where your strengths are. Keep doing what you got to do. We'll be here to help you with the tech stuff and all the other uh, information we get from our great guests. So have yourself a great week and work hard. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. There you go. Night, everybody. Take care, everybody. <laughs> having dinner tonight? How about having some VO, too? VoiceOver Body Shop. Have some voiceover with your dinner tonight on VoiceOver Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Pacific.